Hey there, this is Osama Dahoud. I'm here with a new edition of the 4040 Vision podcast, sports history podcast that looks back at critical moments in a team or athlete's history. Uh, we do hypotheticals like what if the Golden State Warriors really did trade Steph Curry and Klay Thompson for Chris Paul. We do redrafts all the time. Uh, we, 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 do, we have a new format where we kind of look at uh, a scoring system on who had the better redraft picks. So every so often now, uh, you might see these 4040 Vision short episodes uh, on something we find significant, you know, happening in a given time. So for today's 4040 short, I'm going to talk about MMA legend Mauricio Shogun Hua. Uh, so please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, wherever you get podcasts. Follow the pod on Instagram, 4040 Vision Pod, uh, and let us know what you think. We'd love to hear your feedback, and uh, I hope you enjoy this. So it's very exciting. Mauricio Shogun Hua is, is fighting at UFC 283 at 41 years old. Uh, I got into UFC at UFC 100. I was invited over to watch Brock Lesnar fight, so I kind of joined in on what seemed to be like a bit of a circus at the time. I had no idea Brock Lesnar was this decorated collegiate wrestler. George St. Pierre was on that card. He fought uh, Tiago Alves, I believe. Uh, that was the same card. Dan Henderson violently knocked out Michael Bisping with the Hendo bomb. Uh, my first MMA experience was great. Uh, with Mauricio Shogun, who are fighting this Saturday. Uh, it's his 42nd career fight. This is his last fight. He's retiring from the sport of mixed martial arts after this one. He's been fighting for more than 20 years and has been consistently featured on pay-per-views uh, against legends in MMA history. Uh, his, his fighting days, they go back to Pride from the early to mid-2000s, 2003, I believe. Um, and he fought against guys like Rampage Jackson, Alistair Overeem, uh, Antonio Hojiero Noguera, Little Nog, Mark Coleman, Kevin Randleman, uh, to, to name a few. And... A few of those guys, he fought through a tournament to win the Pride Middleweight Grand Prix. So he has he had a great record when he was there. If you've never watched a Pride fight, uh, those fights were all in Japan, and the rules were just so so different. You had these crowds that were quiet during the fights, very different than what we see on UFC cards or boxing uh, cards, where the crowd's pretty lively throughout the fight from the walk up through. The, the, the announcements and the action, etc. But, but back then, they were allowed strikes to the head if the opponent's knee was down. So, you know, one of Shogun's most brutal Jackson, who in his own right was already a menacing elite fighter at that time as well. As Shogun used more Muay clinch, he with these devastating uh, knee strikes. Um, and, and Rampage had no answer for that. Uh, if you've ever seen... Anderson Silva versus Rich Franklin. And Rich Franklin was just numb whenever Silva just locked in that Muay Thai clinch. It was a lot like that. <laughs> so Rampage is against ropes. Shogun hits him repeatedly with these soccer kicks to the head. Those are illegal now. You can't do soccer kicks in any modern MMA. Uh, you know, Shogun, it just shows he comes from a different era in MMA and him fighting in 2023 is incredible. And it just it's a different time. It's the Shudo Box Academy in Brazil. There's a Muay Thai Academy. Vendele Silva got his start there. Anderson Silva, uh, at, at once upon a time, was temporarily at the Shudo Box Academy as well. You watch the way these guys fought. That Muay Thai style was just so ruthless in the clinch and it's kind of what shaped Shogun's fighting style that warrior mentality he showed when he went to battle you see the way you know they fought there was technique no doubt uh, about it I, I wouldn't say necessarily defense was a huge focus of that discipline they were they were trying to hurt their opponents and them themselves getting hurt seemed like more of a distraction from beating guys up than something they should actually be worried about. It was such an exciting way to fight. You always knew whenever Vanderlei Silva or Shogun Hua fought that you were going to see 
some spectacular violence for sure. Um, in Pride, he had a hell of a run. He Shogun went eleven and one over a four-year period. He only lost once while he was there to Mark Coleman, and that was because he broke his arm. Mark Coleman was a heavyweight. He was debuting at heavyweight, and he had, was at middleweight at one point. He fought Kevin Randleman, and he did beat him at heavyweight. So it just goes to show Shogun was um, willing to fight and stand with anyone. He fought Alistair Overeem pre-heavyweight. Uh, just, just a menacing man. Uh, 23 fights in the UFC. 11 wins, 11 losses, one draw. And the UFC put him in so many fight cards in Brazil. He actually lost his debut against Forrest Griffin, surprisingly enough. It's just such a different time, right, to lose to Forrest Griffin. You look at his resume and you're like, how did that happen? Uh, it's one of the most shocking losses in MMA history. Submission, too. Uh, really surprising. He did get his revenge, though. He did beat up. That you know, It was funny. They asked Forrest Griffin. I think it was Ariel Helwani that asked him in the buildup that, hey, I heard, you know, Shogun, who was dealing with an injury, you know, do you want to get the best version of Shogun, make sure that he's he's recovered from that? And Forrest Griffin said, nope, I hope he's uh, still still dealing with that. That would be nice for me. Um, so, you know, my, my, my favorite Shogun uh, event, it's the only UFC I ever attended live. Uh, UFC 139, San Jose. 2011 it was kind of the early days of the five round main events that weren't title fights there used to be three rounds for some of these events where there wasn't a title fight scheduled and there was just like hey we needed two more rounds of that so a fight like this was a good example of that uh so it was, this was a damn treat those two guys went back and forth beating the hell out of each other Going back to the defense point I made, you know, Dan Henderson, it was known that he had a violent right hand. He knocked Michael Bisping out stiff, and that's pretty much what he had. He was a good wrestler, but he just had that huge right hand where he kind of ducked his head. There was a looping, over-the-top punch from hell. Uh, and fans in the crowd were yelling, hey, Shogun, watch the right hand. Boom, he gets popped with that right hand because he's not focused on dodging the right hand fluidly he's trying to uh find his own space to, to take out dan henderson it was just it was an absolute war we were just it was just such a back and forth and we it was one of the greatest live sporting events i've ever seen it's definitely my favorite shogun fight of all time you know his, his other signature moments though for for me have to be i mean there's ricardo arona when he fought ricardo arona uh and rampage jackson i believe in the same night i might have that wrong Wrong. It might have been a little nog, maybe in the same night to win the, the the middleweight Grand Prix of Pride. But the Lyoto Machida fights for me kind of define uh, Shogun's peak uh, before the the decline. I would say it was it was amazing. He was so technical in the first fight against Machida. He showed you know patience like you'd never seen before. You could really tell. He wanted the UFC light heavyweight title. He badgered Machida with these sharp, hard leg kicks the whole fight. By the end of the fight, it looked like he didn't get touched. Machida was all busted up. His legs were swollen. But the judges didn't recognize leg kicks in their scoring. There was a boxing judge there. So he lost to Lyoto Machida, even though he clearly... Uh, outperformed him. There was some of that to be the champ, you got to beat the champ, but it didn't look like Machida defended his title. So they had the rematch. I think that fight has you know, changed how leg kicks influence the scoring of a fight, when especially in repetition when they're effective. He didn't have a scratch on him. Uh, so the rematch, he left no doubt about it. Overhand right. Finished the fight, I believe, in the in the second round, uh, and, and surprisingly, this was the only time that he held a title like that. The poor guy ran into a buzzsaw immediately after that. Named John Jones, who was uh, who won his first title. He was coming up after uh, the beginning of his run, so he didn't stand a chance, unfortunately. But you know, he did reach the mountaintop of light heavyweight and. 
I'm happy for him to have achieved that. His his legacy and his impact on MMA deserves recognition. He was one of those OG warriors that every time he stepped into the cage, you know something violent was going to happen. In 41 fights, only nine went to a decision. So he more than likely was going out one way, and that's by knocking the other guy the hell out if the other guy didn't catch him first. So congrats to Mauricio Shogun Hua on uh, a, a fantastic career and all of his success. He'll be missed dearly. It's the last of a dying breed in MMA. So salute again to Mauricio Shogun Hua. Uh, that's the show. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this. Uh, please stay tuned for more 4040 Vision Shorts every Monday, uh, 4040 Vision Podcast episodes, excuse me, every Monday. And you'll see these 4040 Vision Shorts kind of sprinkle in uh, every, every so often. Thank you, everyone.